Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we welcome back Star Wars Solutions engineer Oris Lesuk, who is back for his second IT Jam with us. So welcome back, Oris. Thank you. Nice to meet you. No worries. So um, we're going to be talking a lot about disaster recovery today. So what are the differences between data protection mechanisms such as um, RAID backup um, and disaster recovery? Well, these are actually the terms that often get mixed and misinterpreted for various reasons. So first of all, RAID, it's the technology that is used to collect the drives into a single or multiple logical units, distribute data over the drives in the RAID array, and add redundancy, depending on the RAID level set. But it's not a separate data copy. The main idea behind RAID is to ensure uptime and performance for the system. So it protects the system against the drive or drives failure. But when it comes to the ransomware, or even simply if you delete a file by mistake, your data is gone. The other thing is the backup. The backup is the separate copy of your data taken at some point of time and kept for the required period of time. Now, backup includes also all the hardware and software components to perform the backup itself and to maintain the data. And the backup allows you to restore and recover your VMs, your data, whenever is needed or in the worst case scenarios. Now, backup, to be fair, is not about the shortest recovery time, recovery time objective. It's more about of the amount of data you can access whenever needed. For example, you can store the backups for years. The DR, on the other hand, is about exactly the shortest recovery time objective and recovery point objective. Usually, it's the separate remote location to where your VMs are replicated periodically, meaning asynchronously, and it serves to bring them up most likely automatically, at least you'd want that, in the case, in the event when the primary side goes down. Now, also to be fair here, the backup NDR is not always that is implemented as the separate solutions. I mean, companies can have both the DR plan and DR facility and the backup plan and the backup hardware. But uh, in most of the cases, or in the majority of the cases, it's one of these, either the backup solution or the DR, which again is not wrong in itself. All depends on the company's requirements and RTO and RPO. Right, yeah. Um, so what are the things that customers should pay the most attention to when they're selecting a backup or disaster recovery solution? Mm. Well, the first thing I would point is the ability for the backup solution to easily integrate within the infrastructure without you having to reinvent your backup plan, your backup schedules and backup windows. Ideally, you would want the backup solution to not become a bottleneck for your production environment and to avoid any dependency of the production hours and production workloads on the backup processes. The other thing is the recovery time. Now, as I mentioned, um, there is not always the possibility to implement both the DR for faster recovery and the backup for the amount of data you want to keep and restore. So you'd want the backup solution to at least be able and be ready to restore fast, basically as fast as possible in the worst case scenarios or if needed. And the third point I would want to make is also the ability for the backup solution to integrate a cloud storage support, to also be able to provide an additional copy of your data in cloud, which can very well serve instead of the remote offsite facility. And again, increase your resilience against the ransomware. Right, yeah. Um, so when we're thinking about um, modern threats these days, what, a, uh, what are the key aspects to be taken into account to increase protection against ransomware, for example? Mm. Uh, well, the, <laughs> the first key aspect is that there is no single piece of software or hardware 
to ensure 100% protection against ransomware or 100% guarantee you'll get your data recovered. It's important to understand that this is the entire and complex process with a set of measures. As of the key aspects, um, I would say it's the usage of the immutable storage whenever possible, be it on premises or in cloud. It will at least provide you the ability to keep the backups intact and restore from them. Of course, if the backups were performed prior to the ransomware attack. The other thing is to perform the weekly, monthly, even maybe quarterly and yearly separate backup jobs and keep them separately. Yes, it requires more storage. It's more expensive correspondingly. But again, it's about increasing your chances to restore a healthy and not encrypted VM from one of these backup copies you already have. Mm -hmm. And the third thing, which is actually maybe one of the most important when it comes to preparedness, it's the actual training of your staff and employees, because it's about the processes they should be aware of, what steps they need to take when the ransomware hits, and even most importantly, to be informed of the potential sources of the ransomware. Because in some of the cases, uh, maybe in the majority of the cases, it's, it's not some highly skilled and planned attack on a specific company. It's just an email that you open and click the link. So in most of the cases, it's quite simple. Then that's the role of the preparedness and of the proper training for the staff to be always aware and how they should act to minimize again the risks of the ransomware commission. Right. Yeah. And talking about Starwind in particular, how does uh, Starwind's product help improve data protection and virtualized infrastructure? Mm. Well, uh, we designed our backup appliance with the goal of basically taking traditional backup infrastructure to an entirely new level. First of all, it's basically a level where you don't have to thoroughly think of and tinker with the backup windows and schedules and without having to worry about your backup uh, process overlapping with the production hours. Now, Starwind Backup Appliance is based on the all NVMe storage backend. So this means extremely fast backup process. Correspondingly, a very short backup window, which avoids and minimizes any dependency of your production environment on the backup windows. Correspondingly, the other thing is that it also hugely increases the speed of the recovery. So the recovery times becomes extremely fast. The other thing also about this tower backup appliance is that it automatically connects the backup target when the backup job is started and disconnects it when it's finished. So all the rest of the time when the backup jobs are not running, the backup target is basically offline, which minimizes the risk of, of ransomware getting to the storage and encrypting your backups. So basically, Starwind Backup Appliance makes your backup infrastructure invisible working on the back end and allowing you to, to focus on your apps, services, your business, or maybe on your production environment when needed. And allowing you to keep the peace of mind knowing that your backups will not be overlapped with the production processes. Right, yeah. Um, and finally, uh, for you, so how does this product, uh, how is it differentiated from others on the market? Mm. Well. First of all, as it might be already clear, the Starwind Backup Appliance is the only solution on the market, the only backup appliance on the market that uses all NVMe storage. Now, NVMe technology is already entering the virtualized infrastructures, but we make sure that your backup system is already there and prepared to work in pair with your NVMe powered production. So you, you won't like your VMs running on extremely fast NVMe storage and your production to be bottleneck, bottlenecked or dependent on the slow backup systems. And that's the future that is 
just coming and just arriving tomorrow already. And the other thing is the ability of this tower backup appliance to restore any VM or file extremely fast. So correspondingly, this becomes the perfect solution for the companies that have strict recovery time and recovery point objectives, maybe allowing them even to perform more backups during the time when they previously managed to perform only single one, thus giving them ability to ensure better RPO and as well as NVMe storage backend to increase the recovery time. And the, uh, also the ability to automatically connect, disconnect the backup target to increase the resilience and ransomware protection, as well as the proactive support that is also comes with the Stellar Backup Appliance and monitors the appliance itself for the hardware and software components, and even more important for the backup jobs to make sure there are no, literally no to minimum possible issues with the backups. All right, perfect, cool. Well, uh, yeah, that's all the questions I have for you today, Oris. Thank you again for joining me in today's IT Jam. Yeah, thank you very much.